we're looking for the slope of a line and I'll start with statement two because I think it doesn't stand a chance on its own knowing that the line crosses the y-axis above the origin and the x-axis to the right of the origin doesn't determine what the slope will be. There can be an infinite number of slopes. All we can really say about the slope at that point is that it's negative. But I can draw lots of different lines with lots of different slopes that have negative slopes and cross the y-axis on the positive side and the x-axis on the positive side. So statement two is not sufficient on its own and we should eliminate the answer choices that claim that it is. So B and D are gone and we're down to A, C, or E. Now at first glance, statement one may seem insufficient. And I'll spare you the algebraic solution because you can find it easily by Googling. Uh, I wanna show you a way to visualize in your head or on your scratch pad what it means when the x-intercept is twice the y-intercept. And since we don't have statement two anymore, right, we're evaluating statement one on its own, those intercepts could be either both positive or both negative. They can't have opposite signs because if they had opposite signs, it would be wrong to say that one is twice the other. It would be negative twice the other or something like that. So they do have the same sign, but I don't know which sign. Okay, so how do I visualize this? Well, a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's see on this graph what it looks like when the x-intercept is twice the y-intercept. And we can look at different cases and we can see how we can move the x-intercept up the x-axis and the y-intercept would have to move up the y-axis proportionally so that the x-intercept is still twice the y-intercept. And we can see what that looks like on the negative sides. And if we try to connect those intercepts with lines, what we'll notice is all of those lines are parallel, which means they all have the same slope. So I don't actually have to find what that slope is. I just need to know that the information in statement one forces the slope to be just one thing. In other words, statement one removes that degree of freedom when it comes to the slope of the line, and therefore statement one is sufficient on its own, and the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.